Hello, Veteran Unicorns. Today, I want to talk to you about how you go about making the decision to put someone in a leadership role. The reality is, is there's a plague in veterinary medicine. We do not have good or effective leaders in our hospitals. Unfortunately, most of the people who are put in leadership roles are put into those roles because of survivability rating. Basically, they've survived in your hospital for three, five, 10 years, or whatever it is, so therefore you hand them a title of a lead, a supervisor, a manager, a director, whatever it is, they've been there for a certain amount of time, so they definitely should get a leadership position. Eh. That's not how leadership works, but unfortunately it's an industry-wide issue and it leaves our hospitals with ineffective leaders and they're ruining our teams. So let me be very clear, when we make the decision to put someone in a leadership role, it actually has nothing to do with their veterinarian skills. Sorry, medical directors, you might be great at cutting surgeries, you might be great at diagnosing things, you might be an amazing doctor, but unless you actually have the street cred to lead people, you shouldn't be a medical director. Same with you, hospital managers. Listen, reality is, as many of you kind of oopsied your way into that role, you were an amazing client service rep. You were an amazing veterinary technician. Whatever it is, you kind of just kept on taking on more responsibility, but you don't actually have leadership skills. And sorry, my peeps, listen, veterinary technician managers and supervisors, you are not immune to having, unfortunately, really bad leadership skills. You also believe that for some reason, if you're in a hospital for five years or 10 years, you deserve the leadership title. You do not deserve that leadership title. You need to earn it and you actually have to have leadership skills. So how do we determine who is an effective leader and what can we do about this problem? Because it's a big problem. Me slamming in an arterial catheter has nothing to do with my ability to actually coach and mentor people on my team. How are we gonna fix this issue? One. You need to come up with leadership interview questions. Yeah, actual leadership interview questions. You know, like those ones that actually vet, do they come from a kind and compassionate place? Do they actually know how to communicate? Do they have any idea what being a leader means? Are they people who understand that at times they need to make tough decisions, but they're gonna do so in a kind and caring way? How are they gonna lead their people? What's their leadership style? Do they even know that there are different leadership styles? They should probably know these things. How about run some scenarios by them? You know, if employee A dislikes employee B, what do you do? Fire them. No, that's not the answer. You don't do that. <laughs> don't, don't do that. You've got to mediate out the situation. And if they're not comfortable with mediation, how do we grow those skills? And then here's the other part of it. Once we've decided who may actually have some leadership skills, it doesn't end there. Being a leader takes a lot of work. You need to go and educate yourself. Educate yourself because it actually is very important that you understand that you are probably the driving force into the culture and the well-being of your team. If you as a leader are failing, probably your team's failing as well. So I need you to go educate yourself. There's a ton of free resources. I'm gonna go ahead and drop a link into this description as well that lists out a lot of free resources for you to grow and cultivate your own leadership skills. Go to continuing education. Most of the big conferences now have professional development on the track. They will teach you about communication, conflict resolution, how to manage uh, do it better plans, performance improvement plans, whatever you're calling them. You definitely want to know these things. Develop out your skills as a leader, not just now, but always. Constantly learn. Just when you think you're amazing at actually communicating, I promise you, someone's going to throw you for a loop. There's going to be some employee that does something that you're like, what? How am I supposed to manage that? So make sure you have a good network of people and continuously grow your leadership skills just like you do your medical skills. And if you are someone who may find themselves in a leadership role that maybe you don't know what you're doing, Grow, grow, grow your skills. And also, it's okay to say, this isn't for me. I made a mistake. I'm sorry. I'm not the right person for this role. There's no shame in that. In fact, it actually takes a lot of strength to acknowledge that. Thank you guys so much for listening. Please think about who you put in a leadership role, not simply because they've been there the longest, but because they are true and effective leaders. Keep on being unicorns. Thanks. Bye.